Basketball Talk Pro. Today the name of our little session is called Offense Beyond Borders and I'm taking that a little bit away from one of the NBA programs, Basketball Beyond uh, Borders. Um, but it fits for this session and it fits what I'm going to be talking about but also what I believe in and I think it's something that really allows your offense to go beyond what's normal and uh, though it, it's not going to be all settled today but over the next weeks and months and into the summer and for sure this summer we will have some special classes uh, on the concept that is starting right now. There's a lot of, I, I feel good about this every time I talk about it because I think it's so important, really important, but I know that a lot of you are just going to blow it off. But don't do it, please, for your own good. This is something that any coach uh, can use. And I'm basing everything we talk about today on fact. You know, I had a little program on this. Perception is a mirror. That's what you want to see, what you believe you're seeing. But it's not a fact. What we're going to talk about today are facts. Uh, these are facts proven and uh, studied and researched. Uh, it's going to be... Uh, everything I can give you, I can support, and I feel very good about that. Um, we're going to talk about an area, though, that um, you have to uh, really allow yourself the freedom to, to not be hemmed in by what you think, or what you see, uh, or what you don't see. Uh, but just listen and, uh, and learn. I can't talk about it except on the board because I've got uh, a lot of information there. So right now I will go to the yellow little thing that I work on and uh, we'll see you there. Okay, let me start first of all uh, with a, a formula that uh, is very well known used in business a lot, uh, but we use it in basketball too, and it works. Uh, it's called the 80-20 rule. Basically what that means, and this is a quick, very quick uh, definition and explanation, 20% of uh, your production comes from just 20%. 20% may create 80% of the total production. So if you put that in numbers, if you had 100 people, 20 people would produce 80% of the total production. The other 80 people would only produce 20%. Uh, it's very tested. I use it a lot myself. I have a friend who's in insurance and investment, and he told me just the other day that uh, he has maybe 300 clients, but about 75 to 80% of his total income comes from 25 people. Uh, and this is the way basketball is too. Because the next number is one you can believe or not believe, but I'm just telling you, you can test me any way you want it. 70% of your scoring comes from unstructured play. Both teams, both teams it works for, and all teams, only 30% of your scoring comes from set plays or structured play, which is your plays. Uh, primarily. It works so much that I think I've done uh, something like 500 or 600 games and it will 
may, it may drop a little bit or go over, but it hovers right around that and that. Game after game, team after team. The only team, only game, one game of all of those games was a game that the uh, plays scored more than the uh, unstructured. It was like about 51 to 49 as I remember, but it was the plays scored more. That was a game between Duke and Kentucky at the beginning of the season, not during the preseason. A regular season game, but it was like about the third or fourth game in. So I, I took it as an anomaly. That's the only game that it happened uh, like that. Uh, here's the, here's the par part I want to get across. Here's where you're spending all your time on your plays. By plays, I mean out-of-bounds plays, need plays, special plays, regular plays. Uh, some coaches have uh, uh, 70, 80 plays. Uh, but in the game, uh, now all my figures, by the way, are based on uh, the NBA, 48-minute games. You can scale them down to fit whatever you do. Uh, but uh, if you go into any practices, I've never failed me. You never see anybody working on that. Everybody's working on that. But this is what they're going to get 70% of their points off of. Uh, odd, isn't it? You know, I, I personally can't understand that. Uh, what's doing your, most of your scoring, work on that. Get good at that. Uh, hardly anybody is good, and I'm going to show you where they occur. You can't figure it out where they're, going to, they're occurring yet. And I'm going to tell you right now. They occur when, the t and when whatever you're doing breaks down and doesn't work and the team has to go on their own. Uh, I call it improvisation. They're making up things as they go. The problem with it is everybody can do that and do it pretty well. But the problem is it's pretty individual. The strongest most proficient player has the ball. Watch Cleveland play. When the play breaks down, LeBron's got the ball. Or that little guard who's probably just as dangerous uh, anymore. This is the number that permeates through everything I'm going to show you. I, f I contend there's three elements in your offense. Half court, by the way, basketball is the only sport that can say this. Every other sport's either all half court or full court. Hockey's just full court. Soccer's just full court. Baseball's just half court. But we have a half court and we also have a full court. That's two elements. The third element is what we're talking about today, and the third element is where that 70. Uh, uh, percent comes in. The third element to most coaches, they know it's there. Every coach knows that the play breaks down and then they go on their own. What they don't know or don't haven't figured out is how much of the time that happens. That's how they're getting the 70 percent. Let me go to the next sheet here and we'll try our best to clear it all up because it's very, very important. In a 48-minute game, plays break down 23.1 times. In other words, those plays that you are so proud of in your practice and they look so good in practice because you don't defend them, you don't have any defense out there, it gives you a great feeling. God, we're really looking good. Yeah, and then the next night you're playing and they're defending you and you look crappy. Uh, but it, it breaks down 23.1 times. Now if you go down here, oh, I think it's on my next one, I tell you how many times that you are in a half court. I'll get to that. Fast break to breakdown is 19 times a game. In other words, 
You start a fast break, they get back, then you go on your own. Some teams don't go on their own. They pull it back out and run a play, call it out. Uh, I say that that is very dangerous. In the 2010 playoffs between Boston and the Los Angeles Lakers, in a very, very tight series, right up to the last part of the game, I thought the difference was this. When, when uh, the Lakers got a fast break situation, they pushed and flowed right into their offense. And the triangle to me is almost a relative to freelance basketball. Uh, they were better at it than Boston. Boston would get a defensive rebound, the coach would jump up and call out a play, they'd set up and have to play against a, a set defense. I can prove where Los Angeles was getting their points and Boston was getting theirs. Uh, and that really hurt them, playing like that. No plays. That's when you don't run anything. You just come down and it happens a lot in the game. What happens a lot is after they run a play, shot and miss, the team gets their own rebound, they push it out, and most of the time they just go on their own then. They don't set it up. Some, some teams try to, but you know the clock is, is running all that time. Now how do, in a, in a total in a game, you're in breakdown or you're in the third element 55 times in a NBA game. But let's talk about their time because that's why you don't notice it. When, you, when the play breaks down, you normally got 12 seconds. It varies, of course, but I'm saying on, on average. When the fast break breaks down, I mean, you don't get it and you keep, you keep going, uh, you usually have around 17 seconds uh, left. And on no play, you got most of the clock. Seven, I mean, you can run in, you know, a, a fumble on the ball or something, the clock might be running, it gets down to seven or eight seconds. But most of the time, you'll have 18, 18 uh, seconds. Uh, that's where the third element is. 55 times a game in an NBA game. I'm going to show you something else. In a 48-minute game, there's 2,880 seconds. Half of them are on offense, half of them are, are on defense. That means that 140, uh, you have 1,440 seconds to run, to, to run your offense. Well, uh, this takes up 765 seconds, all those 55 times, because they're very much shortened over the rest. And that it accounts for 53% of your offense contributes 70% to your scoring, because this is a very good time to score. Uh, and uh, it's because of a lot of elements I don't want to go into uh, today. That's where you're getting your 70%. From that 53% of the time in a game, a 48-minute game that you're on offense, you're scoring 70%. Uh, in 700, 765 seconds. Uh, the rest is... Uh, you know, where you're not very effective, to be very honest to you. Now, you don't notice it because they happen so, in so short. I mean, you may run three, four plays. They don't. They break down, uh, but th at least they're doing something. Uh, and that big breakdown may take three or four seconds. So you don't pay any attention to it. But please, prepare yourself. The triangle under Phil Jackson, not now, but under Phil Jackson had this thing called, I heard him talk about it one time, he called it flow. And he would flow 
from the fast break right into the triangle because it was so easy to do. And they could uh, improvise off of, the, off of the triangle. Okay, in a game, 48 minute game, they were, this is, is just frightening. They run plays 54.3 times. That's an average. Uh, and they had, they get a, they make a field goal attempt, actually get a shot, 32.3 percent of that time, uh, only. Uh, you wonder where I'm getting these numbers? I'll tell you where I'm getting them. When I was at Dallas, I, I when I first went with Dallas before I went on the bench, uh, I was a scout. I scouted college. I scouted a pros. In the year before I went in the, on the bench, uh, we were short of personnel and that we were going through an order of change and, and Mata was the coach uh, and uh, so I did all of the pro scouting. I did 93 NBA games. Did, uh, every team was represented. I got very good at keeping all their plays, all their times they ran at all their points without going to a film because I didn't have time. So I had to get good, uh, good at it and, and I got uh, pretty good at it. Not pretty good, I, I think I was uh, ahead of the game uh, there. And that's the numbers I'm taking all this from. This is all from 30 NBA, uh, NBA teams. Now when I uh, decided to go with Basketball Talk Pro and with, I went to the material. I decided to do another 43 games on my own to get more up-to-date information. That's where this is, uh, is coming from. But this is frightening to me. You run plays and only 41% average, uh, you get no attempts. You don't get a field goal attempt. Zip. You're in the breakdown. And now you're into the third, third uh, element. Actually, <laughs> it's hard to believe in an NBA game, games on average, only 20, of the, of the study I did, 26.6 points per 48 minutes are scored in your plays, 26. Most NBA teams are running 90 to 100 points. The rest come in the third element uh, in unstructured uh, play. So what does this mean for you? Well, I know what it meant for me uh, is that I was going to be prepared for play breakdowns and fast break uh, uh, breakdowns and when there was no play. All my team knew how to run the Monk offense, which is a freelance offense. Anytime there was a breakdown, you could hear our players, one player at least, very quickly say, Monk. It's an easy word. Four, four letters. It, 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 people, the other players could catch on to it right away. When they heard Monk, it went right into their freelance offense. We never skipped a beat. Play broke down? No. We, it didn't make any difference if it broke down. If we got a basket off it, good. If it didn't, we were very confident. End of the fast break, somebody would say the word, monk, and they'd go right into it. By the way, uh, when the Navy SEALs group, that group of about nine or ten men, shot Osama bin Laden, uh, they were in breakdown. And they have one word also. They practice if something goes wrong. Well, that night the helicopter got hung up on the wall. Uh, they were in trouble. Uh, uh, but before they even got to the building, uh, they, you could hear, the, the, the author said you could hear them just say that word. And they were already into their freelance. They were prepared for that battle. This is a big thing. Don't underestimate it. If you do underestimate it, and you want to live playing that other way, you know, if I was still coaching, I'd like to schedule you. Uh, 
because uh, those are easy. I mean, you, you know what they're going to do, so you can play defense on them. Uh, you don't know what we're doing in freelance, because we don't know. So that's it for today. I'm excited about giving this to you. Uh, it's in my book, uh, and you'll hear me talk about it many, many times, but it's valuable. Really, really valuable. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.